Philippines and Malaysia also objected to China's claim of ownership over most of the South China Sea in the map. Earlier, I spoke about the dispute with Democrat Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy, who sits on the Select Committee on China in the U.S. House of Representatives. Congressman, great to have you back on the show. Thanks for joining us today. Is India overinterpreting sure. this map, as China has said? No, I think that, you know, this state, Arunachal Pradesh, uh, has been part of the Indian Union for a long time. And to see it show up as Chinese territory uh, within a map constructed by the CCP um, is obviously going to be very offensive. Uh, but it's not surprising because, remember, the CCP has also devised a map that includes something called the Nine Dash Line, which encompasses almost the entirety of the South China Sea, which is an you know incredibly ludicrous claim, um, and that uh, that's obviously a, a, another problem with their map making in China. This comes at a time of tensions with China ahead of the G20 summit in India, and we've seen this reports now, unconfirmed of course, that President Xi might not attend the summit in person. Uh, we know that there are tensions both with uh, India and the U.S. at the moment. What do you think the implications are if President Xi is not there? Well, it would be too bad if he's not there. I think that those are obviously uh, good opportunities to continue to um, mend fences and uh, have the types of dialogue that are really essential for uh, avoiding conflict. Um, but apparently, according to published reports, uh, President Xi does not want to give India a showcase for its economic success on the heels of its recent lunar landing, successful lunar landing. I think those are really petty concerns. Um, so it's too bad. I want to ask you also about uh, the Commerce Secretary, Gina Raimondo, who was uh, the fourth cabinet secretary in three months from the Biden administration to visit China recently. All of these visits were aimed at, according to the Biden administration, smoothing over tensions, putting guardrails on this relationship, and also establishing lines of communication. At the same time, from these meetings, we didn't really see any breakthroughs. So what do you think was achieved? Again, I think that this um, helps to heighten the level of communication between the two countries um, after um, a little bit of a period of the deep freeze um, last year. And so I think that's good. Obviously, actions speak louder than words. And so we want to see um, actions on the part of the CCP curbing their economic aggression. I think that, along with their military aggression, is at the heart of the tensions between the CCP and the United States, but really the CCP and many of its neighbors. And so um, as long as its aggression continues, um, I respectfully submit it's not only going to aggravate tensions with others, it's going to you know, be counterproductive as the CCP tries to reverse its economic slide within China. So I just want to put to you what China says here, which is that it's the U.S. that is exercising economic aggression here by putting export controls on key <coughs> minerals uh, that are needed for China's economy to grow. What's your response to that? Well, I respectfully disagree. Um, when Japan, the Netherlands, and the United States came together with regard to uh, the October export controls, which basically um, you know, prevents China from being able to use high-end semiconductor chips to fuel um, artificial intelligence and other programs uh, that are you know, fueling their hypersonic missile program or their nuclear weapons program or the Uyghur genocide, I think that's a strong signal that not only the US, but many countries have concerns about Chinese behavior. And the same can be said with regard to them throwing their elbows in the South China Sea militarily, as well as against Taiwan or India in the Himalayas. What would it get to, to get China to change its behavior? Well, I think that the Chinese, um, obviously Ch Ch Chairman Xi Jinping has to slowly avoid the provocative economic measures. Just recently, they hacked into Gina Raimondo's email account, along with Tony Blinken's official email account. Their CCP-affiliated actors are routinely committing cyber theft. These types of actions are strong irritants in my... Uh, according to my constituents and most Americans. And Congressman, final question. What do you think that means for any efforts to create better relations with China diplomatically? I still have hope. I think that uh, over time, if we are strong with regard to protecting our values and our interests, and we work multilaterally 
uh, with whether it's the UK, whether it's our friends, neighbors, and friends and partners and neighbors and allies in the Indo-Pacific region. Um, I think that we can eventually uh, win this competition with the CCP and get them to observe uh, international rules of the road, so to speak, economically and militarily. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always great to have you on BBC News. Thank you so much.